Operation Pinpoint is a multifaceted crime fighting strategy. So the, right now in Philadelphia, we've been dealing with a significant uptick in both homicides and shooting victims over the past three years, about 30%. At the same time, our new normal has been a reduction of vehicle and pedestrian stops of about 70% over that same time period. So how do we operate in that environment? How do we operate and collaborate in that new normal? So typically, these policing models that you see are, they're done in kind of a vacuum. So hotspot policing or intel-led, I mean, we think about these things as sort of separate and distinct strategies, but really, we need to be all of these things all at once. And Pinpoint tries to do this through a complete operational planning framework inside about 45 targeted areas inside, the police, inside Philadelphia to sort of tie all this together in one place. So it integrates all we know about policing in these neighborhoods in a targeted and, meaning, and me measurable way. And then the idea is to use the GIS system to not only communicate these strategies, but also use it to sort of indicate and report out how we're performing inside whatever metrics, outcomes that we've sort of defined for each one of these areas. So through focusing our efforts, right, and working with sort of other agencies, right, so to attack this problem, we have to really think about how do other agencies participate in this crime fighting problem, and how do they, how can we tie them into the police department's goals and objectives and tie them into that commander's needs? So let's move to the next one. So, GIS has been with the police department in Philadelphia for a really long time, since like the 90s and Timony and Comstat. Uh, it typically was a system that was sort of off to the side with a couple GIS specialists. This is obviously a pretty 1990s diagram here. And uh, it was, I mean, they were just printing maps and putting them on the wall for Comstat. They were sort of manual pushes. So over the sort of evolution of this system, it's definitely gotten a, low, a lot more robust. And we're sort of taking that to the next phase, not only to support Pinpoint, but to also create true workflows for our analysts and investigators. Let's move to the next slide. So this is sort of an image of what the system looks like today. And in addition, there were multiple investments that were going on by the police department at the same time that had a lot of overlapping uh, capabilities. There was a real-time crime center portal that was trying to be a one-stop shop search engine. There was... Uh, info share that was being used for suspicious activity reports in the DIVIC that also had searching capabilities. There was Memex that was being used by intelligence. And what we did when we put together the Intelligence Bureau was to begin to look at the overlap of these systems and how we can leverage and take advantage and in the most efficient way possible because the funding just wasn't there for us to support all these systems. So using just the maintenance that we saved, we were able to extend the capabilities of the GIS system to be able to support all these needs and uh, we're going to demonstrate a few of those apps today. And Andrew can sort of talk about how we're sustaining this. So we're doing this now from an, our on-prem environment, which was about 24 servers, to now supporting this through Microsoft Azure. So we have Portal and Microsoft Azure all inside the cloud, Siege is compliant, and now, you know, we just don't get the IT needs that we, or IT staff that we require to sustain an environment like this to refresh servers every five years. So now we don't have to worry about that. And Andrew can talk about some of the capabilities that we get from that. So again, we also had to think about where do we need to build versus buy. So when we examined all these systems, like where do we buy COTS? Where do we put our custom development? And uh, we can sort of show and talk about how that works. So let's move on to the next. So here's a quick demonstration with the video, hopefully it plays, of uh, the most basic need for mapping, right? We need to know where do we need to focus our efforts? Where are these 45 areas? So uh, pretty basic, right? This is using sort of out-of-the-box platform capabilities of ArcGIS Portal. You can search over multiple years of shooting victims, and you can see sort of what the spread of that looks like. So the user can go in, and you can pick any crime type, but we're just using this as an example. And they can search citywide over multiple years and say, okay, where were my shooting victims? And this is about to look really scary. <laughs> this is multiple years, not one year, let's be clear. And, um, and then the user can sort of see where those shooting victims and homicides were, and then look at a heat map really quickly of sort of, you know, what the spread of that is. So the most basic need, right, for GIS, all built out of the box, except for a little bit of customization in the widgets. We can now zoom in and you can see those, where, why we put those tan boxes where they were. Those tan boxes represent those 45 different hotspot areas that we want to focus on. And now we can zoom in even further and at the most basic level, 
an operational commander is going to need to put together a plan for one of those grids. We call them grids. And that operational plan can get communicated through the system. So just by simply hosting a, a document, you can click on that particular polygon, and you can bring up uh, the operational plan. This was a really novel concept in the police department, believe it or not. Just can we all agree on like who the contact people are, oops, there we go, <laughs> and what the goals and objectives are, what the current situation is, right? What, what's driving our crime problem? How do we integrate all those police models, policing models? Who are our prolific offenders that are operating there? Can we all just agree on that so that we're all working towards the same measurable goals? And what are some of the nuisance businesses that are a problem? And what are some of the properties that might be being an attractor for different crime problems. And then how do we make sure that the people at the other agencies, right, the non-law enforcement agencies, like License and Inspection for us or the Streets Department, know what those goals are and what, need, what those goals are so we have shared goals and shared objectives to address the crime problem. So, again, now, in addition, we can look at a sort of similar use case, but slightly different. What does this look like for analysts? So we've built our system to work off of web services, right? Sort of following the Esri sort of model of this. So I can now look at a sort of shorter term period. I think this is gonna be like year to date shooting victims. I can pull those up and I can begin to dig into them, right? Like I'm an investigator, like I'm an analyst or commander that needs to know a little bit more about that job. So I believe he's gonna click on one of those uh, lower, lower uh, homicides, a little uh, black plus sign. And very quickly, you can get a pop-up. And this is where we put some of the custom development, right? So you click on the pop-up, and using web services, I can look at the victim, click on what we call their PPN number, or their Philadelphia photo ID number, and then come to a web-based JavaScript link analysis application that can look at that victim in two degrees of separation as default away from that victim. So each one of these lines represents a connection between that victim via a, a, a defendant, co-defendants on a particular arrest, or whether or not they were stopped in the same vehicle together. And then even the red boxes indicate from the GIS system who has an active warrant. And this is all done through just basic web services. That's where some of the customization went into. I can also use SSRS, SQL Server Reporting Studio, to sort of pull up an incident report. Based, this was all made by GIS specialists. And then also take a look at, let's say, the arrestee on that job and pull up their link analysis as well. And in this case, we're looking at the arrestee, and we're actually looking at another SSRS report of just what their background is. So many of these systems, if you were to buy this out of the box COTS to do something like this, cost for at least Philadelphia, would cost in the millions. And we've been able to do this using the ArcGIS system for, for a much, much less investment. And again, you can actually see the mugshot be pulled up as well. So now looking at another type of question, right? What are I'm looking at this area and I wanna know who's been seen in this area, right? What, I can define my area and my time period for my search, and now I can look and actually pull back last known addresses for defendants. I can look at stops, and it can even look at LPR data if I wanna do that. I can uh, look at incidents, right? People who are committing crimes in that area. And then I can look at frequency tables relatively quickly and begin to, uh, actually examine sort of what the, what, that, what the criminal atmosphere looks like inside that given area. Believe it or not, this was put together by just one of our GIS specialists, right? No programming, oh, it was all configure. Uh, it's pretty amazing what you can do now. So this was our sort of example of focusing on the platform first and trying to minimize the amount of sort of custom development that's going to be required. So moving on. So, we talked about that reduction in stops, so we needed a different way to monitor and measure and evaluate how our deployment patterns look. In this case, this was an operations dashboard that just took the CAD data. We were already ingesting that CAD data into our system every two minutes, and I can look real time at you know, what, what currently is going on. Believe it or not, in Philadelphia at least, like CAD was only available to a handful of dispatchers. Now anybody in the department that's authorized to do so can sort of dig in and get a sense of what the common operational picture is inside that area. They can even pull up, I don't think we demonstrate this, but you can even pull up intelligence products and analysis and uh, that's maybe tied to a specific area. So it gives them this sort of common operating picture and actually as you zoom in, you can see the streaming services of the GPS and the AVL start to pop in as well. Once again, this was all configured. There was very little custom development that went into this. 
Now, this is a very popular tool for our, for our supervisors, a different kind of dashboard, right? Because I can make as many of these dashboards as, as I want. I don't have to pay a vendor for that. <laughs> and I can actually just, as a supervisor, dig into just my district or my unit and see where everybody is, both for officers, officer safety purposes as well as to be able to maintain um, a, a level of accountability of where our people are. And, and, and yes, uh, this is a time lapse. Of, we don't drive that fast in Philadelphia, but it gives you an idea of the streaming services that are coming into this. So uh, another type of tool, this was again put together by a GIS specialist, not a, not a developer, not a JavaScript programmer. They are able to uh, supervise a very popular, somewhat dangerous tool, I think, where you can actually pick a time, a place, and a date, or I can actually put in an incident number and have it automatically find the time and date, query that, and pull back where was everybody at that point in time, right? So this allows us to know if I was paying overtime for folks to be in a certain area, were they there? Were our resources there at 2 o'clock in the morning when I, as the, let's say, if I were the commander, told them they needed to be there? And so what we've already seen, just because of these tools, is a greater amount of time and resources being put where we want them to be, and we're getting away from being so reliant on those stops and those um, uh, vehicle and pedestrian stops. Here you can see a SQL Server Reporting Studio report of just that activity, but now combined with what is the amount of time that was being spent inside a predefined area inside a predefined time. So now I can see in a passive measure of deployment of proactive policing time and not put the police officers in such a difficult time so that they only use those stops for reasonable suspicion not to report back to their command staff that, yes, I was in that, a place at a certain time and date. So now that I have all this information together in one place, we can begin to look at how we can report on that report card, right? So we had a plan for that grid, and we had goals and objectives. And now every month, they can pull up a simple report card that looks at what their goals were for that area, that looks across those various policing models, eventually tying into other agencies as well, and begin to look at how I performed inside that area. So this enhances and changes the kind of conversation inside Comstat. So we're not just putting cops on dots anymore. We're actually thinking about the crime problem and looking at measurable outcomes in order to attack it. It really is beginning to change the conversation inside the police department in the city. So now, you've only seen like a fraction, a handful of apps. There's probably at least a couple dozen apps that have been developed. The sites, this is uh, ArcGIS Sites for Portal, and we're using this to make a much nicer looking homepage for all of our stuff. This is internal only. And you can organize all your various apps all in one place that are part of this police, what we call the Police Intelligence Management System, or Police IMS, that combines the intelligence management and the uh, camera surveillance and Genetech and all that. And now you, it makes it really easy for them to come to find what they're looking for, to find any alerts or analytical products that are just posted, as well as to look at the application library and pull that up. Once again, very easy to sustain. We only have about three GIS specialists. And now we're actually beginning to see analysts make their own applications. And when they do, they can post those applications. They can be reviewed by the central team and then shared with the rest of the environment. So, um, Andrew, can you discuss a little bit about how we're doing this? Yeah, thanks, Kevin. So combining portal, <coughs> server, and GeoVent components of the ArcGIS Enterprise platform deployed on the Azure GovCloud, we're able to create a powerful real-time platform that is able to ingest, manage, and serve data out to the entire Philadelphia Police Department um, from one platform. Utilizing Python for scheduled ETL processes, we're able to ingest data on a scheduled basis in a language and platform that many GIS personnel are very familiar with, so aka not needing custom development um, in order to manage those processes, of which there's 20 to 30-something at this point um, now. <clears throat> Using Elasticsearch, we're able to store uh, large, massive amounts of unstructured data and then search that data very, very quickly in a matter of seconds and less than, a, less than seconds uh, through millions of records be able to find small bits of information for officers that may have otherwise been undiscoverable. So, so information and narratives, um, piecing together you know, 
detect searches that, that would typically not be able to be discovered through a traditional search uh, mechanism. Using containerized technology, we're able to, such as Docker, we're able to quickly deploy applications and then deploy updates to applications in a matter of minutes rather than the traditional deployment methods of, of you know, a release of an application. So when a, when a bug is noticed or a feature is detected in, for example, the link analysis application that you saw earlier, we were able to quickly make a change to that application and then deploy that ap application with, with non-disruptive uh, deployment mechanisms so that users can still use the application and then receive that, that update. As an example of cloud, a few months ago, we saw a 5,000% increase in real-time data flows uh, from AVL connected devices. So that's a crazy increase. Um, unfortunately, it was due to a uncoordinated uh, production push um, <laughs> to devices, uh, to all city vehicles, from a pilot to all city vehicles. But what happened as a result was that we started getting alerts from, from Azure. So with Azure, we were able to configure alerts on our environment. So if anything was going wrong, we would know about it right away. So sure enough, we, we found out about this right away. So if, at the time we got alerted, the first metric that we hit was on one of our GeoVent servers, which is processing all of our AVL data. Uh, the CPU spiked on that server, and it basically came to a screeching halt. So at that point, we were able to quickly go in, resize that server, and then scale up the environment to be able to handle that, that, that increased load of, of points coming in every one second. And in less than five minutes, we were able to go from the alert to the resizing to the, the stabilization of the environment. So if we were working with on-premise servers, physical servers, we could probably still be waiting to this day for a server to be uh, purchased, delivered, wired, and added to the environment um, in order to stabilize us. And this was a few months ago. So in this case, cloud was a, a, a huge benefit um, to being able to uh, quickly scale out our environment to, to you know, handle the needs of, of the data flows. I heard some very interesting things. Great. Let's give these guys a hand for Operation Pinpoint, please. <laughs>